Hey guys, welcome to another review. Um, long time coming this one. Not particularly a new product, um, but something I was sent to play with a fair time ago, um, and I've only just got around to start doing, to be honest with you. So what am I doing today? Today I'm doing this Silica Mr. V3. This comes courtesy of James on the Facebook group, but is available from loads of retailers, depending on where you are. Um, a retailer in the UK, smokecloud.co.uk. Um, over there, this will cost you one hundred and forty uh, forty four ninety nine before optional extras if you wanted them. Just to go over a few of the uh, the bits and bobs about this, um, whilst it's here and the information is in front of me. Um, so, like I said, one hundred and forty four ninety nine. It is a, obviously it's a hybrid twenty two mil juice flow control, awesome source. Mm -hmm. Let's go over some particulars. Um, a couple of options you got available. Let's smoke cloud. First of first of all is uh, additional short PMM, PMMA tank is a tenner uh, if you wanted the short PMMA tank, and if you wanted the eighteen four ninety tube, it's going to cost you another tenner. Um, you know, so you know, hundred sixty five quid if you wanted those two options added. Um, let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Please note that da, 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 da. okay, the Mr. V3 hybrid is brought to you by VJ Mods and Finland. Stylish hybrid is simple and easy to use. No special tool needed to set up, just start vaping. We'll do a re and the close up of this for you guys. You can have a proper look at it. Um, but that's what it says in here. What's new for the V3? Uh, tube parts are machined from a solid material. This means that the threads and surfaces are better, plus, it's easier to polish. Um, no knurlings. Solid negative post, which is easier to set up, and the air hole size is reduced in this to a 1.5 mil from a 1.8. Now I've been saying this is about a 1.5 mil draw, so it's happy to have that confirmed. Um, lengths: uh, 127 millimeters. Diameter is 22. Liquid capacity is 3.5 mil. No, it's not. It's more than that. It's got to be more than that. Um, juice flow control, and it uses. The, the, the uses variant batteries. This is a short tank model, which is six millimeters. Which is too short. Hold on. This is a short tank model, which is six millimeters shorter than the Mr. V1. Why not pick up an extra 14 inch tube to give yourself extra vapor time? Here, my tank. Okay. Well, this is a 350 version on uh, smoke clouds. So it's not as accurate, but you know the prices are about the same, uh, and it definitely looks like a 650 version in the picture. Um, so. That's a bit of the information about this. Now, I've actually had this with me in possession for about about six weeks, I think. It's been ages. Um, and James must have think I've stolen it. But that's what it is, and that's how long I've had it. And James, I promise it's only right back to you very soon. Um, now, I've, I've, I've used this a lot, um, to be honest with you. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is chuck it on the counter, show you a quick close-up of it, do a quick re rick of it, then come back to me and uh, we'll have a little chat about it then. So that's what I'll do now. I'll stick it down and hopefully you can see it all with this webcam. Right guys, quick little up close of the uh, Mr. V3 uh, hybrid. So yeah, we're just going to show you how it's done quickly uh, and what it's about um, and some of the details of it and then we're going to do a quick little re rick so, uh, where do we want to start? Take this. Let's just break the atomizer section from the battery section. Okay, so, I mean, as you can see, finish on it. It's lovely. It's uh, bearing with me, guys. I'm working with autofocus with a webcam here. It's kind of a sandblasted situation going on there, um, which is fairly cool. I like that, to be honest with you. Um, well, 18650 battery tube. That is a fairly simple bit of kit. So, that's that done. Let's plonk her there. Um, now, we're getting to the switch. Now the switch itself, um, you've got some sort of markers at the bottom as I say guys, bear in mind I'm on autofocus with a webcam because it's a pain in the ass. there we go, it's not going back to the old school this, there we go, you've got some markings on there um, and you've also got your vent hole in the bottom. Now you notice your, your your locking ring, you know, as you sort of unscrew it, the, the button comes with it and then you screw it back in and the button goes with it again. Now how this works is if we screw it on here. As we're putting the battery in, depending on the size of your battery, your button will be pressed out. Okay, so then you obviously bring your locking switch to. So basically, it's going to match with your button. Um, so the bigger the battery, the more the throw. 
you know the actual throw itself will remain pretty much the same but the longer that button's got to travel for the the um the locking ring okay so i mean that in itself is a pretty cool design and i will break that down for you now just because i can more than anything so we'll stick these back over here now to take the button apart it's a fairly simple procedure push your black Durring piece down, okay, and just unscrew that brass contact in there. Contacts are brass, guys, as well, just in case you were wondering. Now, it is better if you can keep a hold of the sort of the black insulator there, um, purely because there is a spring under it, which you will see in a second. I know you can't see much of this, guys, and I do apologize for that, but right, you've got your brass contact. If you let go of that, you've got your insulator, and then you've got a top spring, you know, gets uh, increasingly bigger or smaller depending on what way you're coming from, all right. Um, then we go into the actual button itself, bottom section, spring, not a magnet, okay? I mean, I imagine that, I mean, you will be able to get magnets for these custom made um, if they're not available, but you know, spring sits over here, fairly simple bit of kit, that down there, and then you've got your lock and ring there. So, I mean, it's not particularly complicated. One thing I do recommend, let me just put it back together and I'll show you. That goes in there, that goes in there now, larger section at the top, Delrin on top, with your venting up, okay, so you've got your grooves in it up, and then put your contact back in, which looks like, I don't know, a, a 12 or a 14 machine screw. Now that sits up quite high, okay, so your throw will be quite short, but long at the same time, depending on your outlook. What I would recommend doing, and what I have done with this, and this isn't mine, this is courtesy of Jay, but you know, it's something that I would definitely recommend, is hold your button in, there is that, and give her a tighten with these pliers just to make sure she doesn't undo on you. Okay, it takes two seconds, that's that done. Um, it's just going to give you, you know, that bit more security when it comes to unlocking it. You know, sometimes you keep going, also, they go for doing, um, and it happens with a lot of devices. This is no exception. It's just bear that in mind. But that's our switch. So, very quick there, guys. Sorry about that. Um, now, you've got your top atomizer section. Moving into your top contact where your battery's going to sit. Okay, you've got a screw in there, um, which will be providing your positive. Um, and then you've got a brass contact there, lovely stuff. Threadings are spot on. Um, and again, same finish all the way up. Now, what we're going to do, we'll unscrew this top cap. Like that. Um, the top cap's a fairly simple piece of kit. It's just a top cap threaded on the outside. O-ring and an O-ring internally to fit around this, uh, not really a drip tip mouthpiece, we'll call it. Um, so that's that, lovely stuff. If we then unscrew the tank section, just there. It matches the body precisely um, in finish, so that's lovely. Uh, and then we go down into what will be, you know, our hybrid top and atomizer section. Um, here you've got your chamber, and you've also got your juice flow control, which we'll go into in a second. So unscrew that. Very cave unlike, but you've got a bit more room on here to work with. And I really hope I'm looking over the screen. And I'm not thinking this autofocus is doing what I'd like it to. To be honest with you. So there's your deck. Come on. Uh, I'm gonna have to manually do it. Sorry, guys. Let me turn the wire focus off. Right, let's bring it up. We'll get our focus on. There we go. There's your deck. Okay, so you know some nice big wells cut out there. You've got your sort of finger tight um, positive and negative there. You've got a little raised airflow section and obviously screw thread in there for your uh, for the tank section. Okay, so let's focus it back out and bring it down. Um, air flows here. All right found the drill to be around about a 1.5 millimeter. Um, and with this build, right, obviously your coil's slightly diagonal, uh, and these wells are made to have wick in them, you know, three mil silica, or, you know, something like a couple of one and a half mil of silica, or cotton, um, if you so pleased. So I'm gonna do a quick little re-wick for you, all right? And it's not it's not a particularly difficult build, this one, if I'm honest with you, so I'm just gonna crack straight on and do that now. Let me grab some supplies from my beautiful assistant. Um, I've got a two mil bit of, um, well it's like, it's basically like a two mil drill, but it's actually a bit of stainless steel, two mil rod from eBay. Um, bought them, my partner bought them in fact, and then cut them up, so we had loads of them. Um, you know, it worked out cheaper than buying drill bits, so a little hint there guys, if you uh, if you haven't got the precise measurements yet. Now, just pull these tight, and that's right guys, you just heard right, I'm using my teeth. Um, <clears throat> what I've got there, I forgot I've turned all the focus off, damn you. What I've got there is a very simple micro coil around the two mil sort of drill bit esque situation going on there. Right, let's zoom it back out. Um, 
At this juncture, we're very similar to a cave one build, if I'm honest. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I've loosened them nuts off there, and then I'm just gonna plump that micro coil in there. Now I wanna turn it sort of like that, but first of all, let's get that leg around there, that leg around there. Now I do find that getting them sort of go where you want them to isn't particularly difficult, but until you get that first one sort of semi-secure, which I know you probably can't see much of, but I have just done, um, the second one then becomes a lot easier. So I find basically I screw the first one down, then I'll secure the second one exactly where I want it, and then I'll move the first one again. It just seems to be the way that I find is easiest to build this. So where we are now is there. Okay, hopefully that's visible to all of you guys. Um, <clears throat> now, all I want to do really is just maneuver the core. I mean, sometimes I'll find with these builds, I want to use um, a little pair of pliers on the uh, coil, you know, the, the, the positive and negative, just to make sure we're in the right place. I don't think we need to here, so um, I'm just going to quickly grab some uh, little screwdriver, in fact, because my tweezers have wandered off somewhere, so I'll have to go and grab them in a second and move that over. See, that's what I was afraid of. The wires just popped out of there, which is why I tend to wrap like that. And then I'll grab my little uh, needle noses and give that a nice old turn until I basically get it to bite there. And then just give it another little one like that with those. Um, and then the same on this one just because I'm now here. So I might as well wrap one, two. We can now snip these legs off. One there. And one there, and move our call back over to above our airflow. Now I tend to pull this call down just to tension it um, and bring it over the airflow like so. And I'm gonna have to unwrap my tweezers. Sorry, guys. <coughs> Major apologies for being a complete and utter unprepared fool. Um, so basically. If I bring the focus out a little bit, bring her in, hopefully you can make that out. You know, I basically just, just push it down towards the airflow. I find that, you know, the rope's slightly warmer if you do that. Um, don't know why, but it is. And uh, yeah, I just prefer the build to be built like that. So at this point, I'm gonna remove that drill bit, plonk that down there, get rid of some of this useless stuff that I'm not gonna need. Right, now, let's stick this on a mod. On a mod, stick it oh good focus back in helps. This mainly focus like ain't for everyone I'm telling you. In fact I think I'll turn it all the way back on at this point because I've done most of the up close stuff. Um, right now this mod, if I stick that in there, stick that in there, it's not a mod, it's a hybrid damn you. If I now, that's a nice throw, push it, nothing happens. Because we've got a nice brand new purple flat top 35 amp batteries and we've got our flat connection there. Um, we haven't got a connection to be made because it's not making contact. So what I've been doing is using this little 2mm magnet. Now a smaller magnet would be a preferable to me. Um, a nice little sort of 1mm, half a mil of anything. Just enough to raise that up there. Or if you've got a flat top battery, you know, um, with the, the connector at the top that you can, you can pilfer, then sweet. Um, I'm just gonna push them wires against there. Now, get some cool ground situation going on. We're not actually too bad here, to be honest with you. We'll just give it a little, a little crimp. These are ceramic tweezers, guys. If you want to know whether they're worth buying, I might do a little video on them. Um, and then that's what we want, really. Now, me being me, um, I'm going to cut on this, of course. So I'm going to lock her off just because I've made that steak with Moz before. Um, now, this is some organic cotton, boiled. Just because that's what they say you should do. Personally, I don't think it tastes any different whatsoever. Um, put it a little bit, give it a twist. Most of you guys will be more than familiar with how to wrap a micro coil and you know recut and all that situation. But if you're not, no, I thought I'd show you anyway. Um, pop, there we go, pop your cotton through, and as you do, give it a little twist. Just to about there, you know, we want her to be moving like so, but not too much. So that's that. Now, when it comes to where to cut these, to be honest with you, what I do is get it to about there and give her a snip. Um, 
Now I do tend to pull it back through and give a little bit more on this side because it's a thinner part of the, uh, the cotton, the cotton wick. Now, where's my juice? There it is. I'm gonna prime this just because it makes keeping these wicks in the channels a bit easier. Uh, and as I say, guys, sorry for the camera quality. I'm on location. Um, what we've got going in here today, we've got some G2 Vapor Blue Pop Shock, uh, 12 milligram. So we're gonna give that a nice little go and a review of it is coming up as well. If it hasn't already been done, depends on what we're uploading these in. So obviously, as I always do, uh, more habit than anything, but it's not a bad habit to have is start with priming the coil, just in case you was to accidentally activate this. Now, at least you might have a chance of saving um, what you've already put in there, as opposed to having to re cotton rule. Uh, and then I'm generous with this when it comes to priming it. Um, you know, completely fully primed wick, as if I was about to sort of use a drip by that kind of priming procedure. Let's put that down. Now grab my slightly bent uh, micro screwdriver. Now it's a simple case of just sort of using this to tuck these in. Now a bit of finger action might be required, woohoo. Um, and then bosh. Okay. Now I've found, to be honest with you, the tighter the better. If you do not ram these channels with cotton, well, every time I've tried and I'm, I've had this for quite a while, sent through like free just to have a play with by one of our subscribers. I find if you don't absolutely ram these channels full of cotton, it, um, it, it overwicks and floods. Now I know that's a bit of a strange one, but because I think of the amount of control you've got a juice flow, if you do over, overload it, you can just simply open up that juice flow bit, whereas if you underload it, it's a complete nightmare. Um, so hopefully, you can see that there, okay? I've rammed it full, rammed it full. Now, grab our top cut section, try your best to make sure you're not gonna be trapping any cotton. I am a little bit there, so I'm just gonna gently stab her back in and then screw that all the way down. Grab your tank section. Now this is where the long procedure can start when you're using a dropper. So let's just put one in there with the dropper and call it a pourer. Now I find filling it to the bottom of the threads is pretty much just about right. Now when you're filling it, make sure that juice flow is fully closed off, all right? Because otherwise you will flood it when you do what I'm about to now, which is put the top on. So now full of juice, chuck that top on like so. Give it a nice tighten down. Now I found there isn't as much need to turn this upside down. I mean obviously because it's designed to top fill like a K-Fun. But when you do fill it, I'll try and get this on camera. Not so much what's that, or what you're seeing, but what you're hearing, hopefully. Or would be, if I could undo it. There we go. I tighten up a little bit too much. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen for me. Uh, sometimes when I top fill it, um, if I flip it upside down, I then keep it upside down to start unscrewing it, to let the air come through. Um, because obviously if the air shoots through, it stands to, shoots through, it stands to reason. If it's, up, if it's a normal way up and you undo it, the juice is gonna shoot through. Um, another really cool thing about this, and it's a very, very simple solution to what I would consider to be quite a big problem, is juice flow. How do you know when you know, you're at your maximum extension for juice flow? As we are there, you can see, hopefully, you can see a little line on the mouthpiece. There we go, you see it just at the bottom of the mouthpiece there. Now if I continue to unscrew her, you see another little line up here. Hopefully you can see both of those. There you go. Now the top line is as you, your juice flow starts to take shape. You know, that's when you're coming in and your juice flow is starting to affect what's happening. Because to be honest, a lot of these builds, if it's not too low and if you packed it right, I find you can leave it fully closed and it wicks just fine. But that's how you know your maximum. The second line, you hit that, stop unscrewing, because otherwise you're going to unscrew the cap and pop, which is a problem that previous version had. Um, other than that, guys, we are done here. So I'm going to take this back up to the desk and we're going to have a nice little vape and a chat about this. Right, guys, that was a quick close up ish, quickish close up um, of the Mister. Sorry about the autofocus, who heart on, on that. It's a pain in the arse, this webcam, so normal camera work will be resuming. Which is poor at best anyway, let's be fair. Um, but that is what it is. Hopefully you can make out what was happening and you had a little look at it anyway. Um, a few things just to rehash. I mean, the switch design, I think that's very intelligent. Um, 
there's minimal adjustment to be done. You know, there's no adjustment uh, to be done. The problem is, is there's no adjustment to be done. <laughs> All right, so if you were to have a battery that needed adjustment, you know, or you wanted to make that throw short, you can't actually do that really. Um, but it's not a problem for me. I haven't, I haven't found it to be a problem. So you know, but it's worth noting. Um, other than that, I mean, in terms of just sort of straight appearance, it's very simplistic. This, um, there's not a lot going on here. All right, you've got your, your tubes, your, your airflow section, and your bottom rings, and your top. It's a very slightly different finish, um, obviously intentionally. Um, but other than that, it's a very clean design. You know, it's just one piece all the way up um, hybrid. That's what it's meant to be. Um, the building it is fairly simple, as you see. It's I don't think it's too dissimilar to a K fund. Um, it's it's not the same. Obviously, you've got them twisted. I would rather have screws, um, but then I'm glad it's not a screw and post system. So you know, I say that, and then if I had that, I might regret that decision. Um, but it's not hard to build. As you can see, I've got a micro coil and cotton in this, um, which is what I'd have in all of my atomizers. Um, yep, uh, Michael and got in this, and no problem whatsoever. I mean, in the bump on smoke guide, it says three and a half milliliter capacity. Now, to be honest with you, I would take that with a pinch of salt because I, I don't think that is three and a half mil in any way, shape, or form. Just purely because of the size of it. I know the chamber in there is pretty big, the, you know, the chamber cover, but and the juice flow section, but it's not. It's not that big. Um, I would say it's closer to a five mil tank, maybe even more, probably six mil in that tank, depending on where you fill up to. You can push your limits with it, go up into the threading, um, and then kind of recoup that loss a little bit by leaving the juice flow control and allowing the pressure to remain in the tank um, until obviously you've got a dry wick. Other than that, I mean, living with it, there's not really. There's been one or two little niggly bits. One of them is, you know, the magnet. Having to use a magnet for. Um, your flat top batteries now obviously this is not new so you know the flat top era was it was either or now basically it's flat top or nothing really um i mean there are the nipple tops out there but they're a lot less common um and a lot more a lot more people tend to go with the flat top flat top batteries over the nipple tops now so that, i mean that's one thing and that could be a problem because i mean when i put the magnet on one of my batteries the other day to make it moved made contact with the side and obviously it shorted and vented my battery or didn't vent but it shorted the battery and destroyed it because it melted the insulator at the top um, so I mean that's something to look out for um, and obviously because of the magnet there's quite a big throw there on the switch now in comparison to what, w what it would be if this was just a small nipple as opposed to a 2mm magnet um, to resolve that issue um, of the magnet moving I've stuck a washer around the outside to make it so that it can't move. Now, if I was using the thinking cap, I would have done that in the first place, but I wasn't, and uh, that is entirely my fault, to be honest. <clears throat> the switch design itself, as I went through it, I think it's quite intelligent. Um, it is a little bit more on the complicated side for some of you who don't use, you know, the, the more advanced gear, I suppose, but it's not hard to put that together. It's not, it's, you can have the bits set in front of you and pretty much slot it all back together um, based off what you can see. The only real bit of branding is on the bottom button, uh, which is where your venting is. Um, and again, I like that. One of this thing's main appeals for me is how beautifully simple that looks. Um, so that is what that is. <clears throat> I like the juice flow control. I think that's incredibly effective, and it's a very intelligent solution to a very simple problem, but not one you know that you see all the time and you'd be surprised how often you get juice flow control and no way to, to tell when it's going to be too much um, so I like that too um, the mouthpiece I think the height is lovely to use it's lovely um, and again I'm just kind of singing this thing's praises to be honest with you so what I'm going to do a lot so this is one of the first side overviews that I've done of a mod or a hybrid or anything like that the, the format's going to remain the same. It's still going to be five, six point hit this um, with this because it's a hybrid. So, um, and I'll yeah, tell you the opinions. So, I mean, first of all, looks, I mean, it's simple. It is one piece, very, very beautifully simple. The finish is, it's kind of almost like a sandblasted finish. Um, and personally, I think this thing looks awesome in a world full of glitzy, glammy, 
blush, bling, in your face stuff, and not even the really complicated, really stupid mods and atties, but you know, just the general day to day stuff would be a bit bling now. Um, I love this. I love how this looks. I'm giving that a 10. Um, it's a preference thing, and you're going to be able to decide whether you like the look of it for yourself. But personally, I think it looks bloody awesome. Sorry, I got a little bit of a sore throat going on. You might be able to tell because of the croakiness of my voice. Um, so, looks, that's why I'm giving it a 10. Um, usability. Now, in terms of use, I mean, if you've got your nipple tops, it takes out that issue with the battery. Um, but, I mean, your everyday kind of use stuff, you know, changing batteries, applying locking rings, really wicking and recoiling, um, using the juice flow control. The coil itself, rebuilding it, is not particularly difficult. I think it's, you know, as difficult as a K fund is, and I don't think that's very difficult. Um, but some of you may, you know, may not be at that level or may not want to be, you know. Um, but for me, rebuilding this thing is, is slightly more difficult than the K fund. The K fund's a 10, so this is a 9. Um, the only thing I would sort of make you aware of is you seem to really need to ram them channels. And I don't mean, you know, with, with a K fund or, 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 you know, something like that, or a tie fund or. You know, you put your wick and cotton in, you kind of just get to the point where it's enough and you stop. With this, you kind of, I'm pushing cotton in there, like, I'm thinking that's far too much. And it's still, at times, isn't enough. Um, and I think it helps because you've got that juice flow control. You can open it up and really expose them wicks. I don't think it matters as much with this um, as it does with certain other A's. So, I mean, that's that one thing. Just be aware that you may, you know I mean, ram them channels, to be honest with you. Um, because it will take it. It will take it and it will work fine. I've never had this thing under wick, no matter what I've stuffed into them channels. Um, so, I think that's pretty cool. Um, filling the tank is fairly easy. Close off your juice flow control, undo your top cap, fill it up, stick your top cap back on, um, leave that juice flow control, and then what I tend to do is stick it upside down, wait a minute just for the juice to all come down, and then undo that, and you'll hear, I tried to show on the camera, but typically the one time you want to show anyone, it doesn't bloody do it. Um, but I tried to show you on the camera, and it didn't happen, but it will go... As it releases that air into the chamber, and obviously, if you'd done it the right way up, that air wouldn't have been there, it would have been e liquid, and that would have been everywhere. So, that's one thing. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, usability, it's a 9 for me. I don't think there's anything complicated. The build's a 9, everything else is a 10, to be honest. But, you know, I'll give it an overall 9, just to be fair. Um, and, yeah, it, it's, there really is no problems with this. It's, it, it's simple in design, not just in terms of looks, but in terms of usability, too. Um, the maintenance of this device, I mean, again, it depends on what you're running. I run micro cool cotton, so I just whip that cotton out, dry burn it, and then I'll put new cotton in. It's, it's a piece of piss, it really is. So, <coughs> other than that, an occasional polish, which is the same with everything you own, if you wanted to, that is. Um, and changing the battery, maintenance is a 10, it's not particularly hard to maintain, and I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, flavour and vapour, now this is where this thing kind of, <sighs> the flavours can be very, very different in this um, to what they can in, you know, your, your typical K-Fun, for example. I find some juices in a K-Fun are really enhanced, uh, and in this they're not, uh, and it's the same in some drippers, probably because it's got a slightly um, looser draw. Um, but then I find others, it's a completely different take on the flavour. Um, and now obviously you can choose your saturation level of your wick as long as you're not over wicking <coughs> no problem um, so flavour from this I'm using blue pop shock from G2 in this and I've got to admit it doesn't taste as good in this as it does in a dripper but then it doesn't taste as good in my K-Funds it does in a dripper either um, I had the, the Vazilla in there um, and I've had Jesters in here you know, and I've had like, some of my own custards in here and they've really worked well um, now because of the looser draw, you know, it's it's not going to be as good as certain other varieties like K-Fronts for example, in certain circumstances. Uh, in comparison to the others, you know, it's gone from a 1.8 to a 1.5, the, the flavour will be better because of that and that's in probably why they've done it. The 1.5mm draw is still more near enough for me to do a lung hit. Um, with no issues whatsoever. So for me, a 1.5mm draw is kind of where I like to be there or thereabouts. So I'll give the flavour a 9. My overall for a flavour would be a 9, just because there are times where it's outperformed by you know, certain other varieties, especially when you take into the price range of this. Um, vapour, I mean again, it's, it's ample vapour, it depends on what 
what you want. If you're chasing clouds, you're not going to be using a mister. Um, but, you know, you've got a one and a half mil draw, you've got plenty of airflow there, so there's definitely potential for plenty of the vapour to be there as well. And that again, it is, is going to be dependent on build as well. I mean, this is not a stupid build. This is like a, a sort of 0.8 to a one ohm build. And the vapor's fine. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So I'm going to give the vapor a 10. Um, next would be build quality and price. Now, we'll do build quality first. Um, the screw threads on this are spectacular. Everything slots together as well it should do. Once it's in, it's locked in tight. The buttons feel feels fairly firm. You know, I like to say it is a spring, but this is from you know a time when springs were what was used. Um, I mean, they still are to be honest with you. Magnets aren't in everything, um, so build quality is getting a ten. It feels solid. I mean, it, it feels. If I threw this at you, it would bloody hurt. Obviously, it's metal, but you know, it's heavy um, and. It's built incredibly well, and you know the engineering in the the drip tip, you know, just for the juice flow control, minimum and maximum amounts, you know, when it starts and when it finishes. That's all part of build quality for me because it affects the quality of the build, um, and it takes a bit of design in there. So I think I think it deserves a ten. I think it's lovely. I really do. Um, price a uh, hundred and hundred and fifty quid. Let's call it. I mean, it is a hybrid, so you know. It's not just an Atty or a mod, but it's still 150 quid. Um, a K farm would run you 75 or 70 quid. I'm going to give the price an 8. Um, now, that's for a general consensus. That's an overall, I think, a price is an 8 because you're getting a lot for your money in terms of performance and usability. For me personally, um, the price, and it is one of the rare occasions where I'm giving the price a 10 despite how high it is, um, purely because it's one of them devices, much like a K fun, that you just pick it up and you don't know why. There's other stuff there, but you go for this. I go, I've, been, I've gone for this over my K fun, um, and you use it and use it and use it. You are getting a mod and you are getting an Atty in the, in the combination, and I really enjoy using this. The worm really enjoys using this my partner really enjoys using this i haven't given this to anyone who hasn't really enjoyed it um and you know that to me sings how good this is um so for me the price is getting a 10 it is getting a 10 because of how good it is but it is expensive you know if you can justify the price then you can justify the price it's as simple as that um build quality versus price i think you're getting your money's worth i do um I'm not one for going buy this because it's £190 or whatever else. I tend to go, that's ridiculous. But in this circumstance, I do believe you're getting what you're paying for. Um, so I think the price is definitely relevant and it's fair. Um, now, overall for this, you can probably gauge what it's going to be. Um, but my rule for this is going to be a 10. I love this thing. I really do. It, I... I've owned a fair few hybrids, all right, and there are downsides to so in hybrids. You can only use it with this. Um, I mean, there are other sort of tops and other hybrids that will be cross compatible with this because they use the same thread in. But it's not like buying a mod and a, with a 510 connection. It's not like buying an Atty with a 510 connection. You know, you, you're very restricted to what you can use. And to be honest with you, in this circumstance, that's the way I want it. So that's not a problem. But you are restricted to it. Um, there's no, there's no real downsides to having this, in my opinion. You know, the only problem that I've encountered is when I first worked it, I thought, nice and sort of get that cotton in there, just snug enough. Well, Jesus Christ, it is leaking. It's not even flooding; it is just <laughs> leaking. Um, I mean, one thing I would change if I were to design this, or if, if this was to be redesigned, the little channel that's in there um, for the air, airflow to go over your coil. I would make that slightly taller because. You've got a fair bit of room there in between that and the core, which is why I always push the core down. Um, I would make that another mil or two taller because then, if you when you do get liquid into the tank, you've got more of a chance of saving it, or more of a chance, or more of a chance for there to be liquid in the tank before it starts to gurgle, before it starts to flood. Um, so I mean, that would be a change I would make, I suppose. Um, other than that, I mean, 
there's not really a lot you can change about this to make it any better. It's a spectacular little device. Airflow, I guess. I mean, you know, the airflow controller would be pretty cool, uh, and I'm sure that could be done as well if they wanted to. Uh, and I would also, on this bottom section of the um, atomizer, on the top cap, if we look at the hybrid, I mean, I would, I would have a little nub just in there, um, so you can use your flat tops. Um, that would that would be it. There's not really much you can do with this. I have found this thing delivers power really well. Um, the brass contacts do the job, and obviously you maintain them, and they hit hard. It does hit hard. It's not. I've had my K fun for a long time now, and it'll always be by my side. Um, you know, my typical setup. What is a K fun on, on a fortune mod because I love the setup, I love how small it is, I love how usable it is, and I love how it performs. Um, this is the only setup that has sat side by side with my K fun on fortune mod and not been out of place whatsoever. And when I look at them, I don't care which one I grab because they're both fucking spectacular. Um, so, I mean, if you're looking for a good hybrid, this is a good hybrid. Um, it's got options. It's not a pain in the ass to live with. It's not a Genesis hybrid. I know a lot of you guys out there are Jenny fans, but for me, in a practical real world sense, they're not as usable, they're not as versatile, and they're not really for me, uh, would be my take on that. There's not really a lot more I can say, guys. I'm recommending this. I am. I Even at the price range, you know, I definitely recommend this to anyone who wants wants it basically if you want it go and get it you won't be sorry it's a bloody good fave and it's a great little bit of kit um other than that i think i'm pretty much done um again apologies about the uh the up close um stuff down there on the webcam did me best for you uh, i may do a little follow-up quickly before i send this back to jay just a two minute video making sure you can see everything that i wanted you to see i'm not guaranteeing that's gonna happen though guys you know i don't work like that um but other than that guys Thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you, a big, big thank you to James uh, for sending this down all the way from the US. It wasn't even local. Sent this down, a lovely bloke, and I really do appreciate the fact that he's done that. Um, and obviously, all you guys for watching. Um, I've been Mr. Proton, and I shall see you soon.